Okay, I want everybody to just uh, go with me here. Imagine that it's October of last year. There's no pandemic. There's this new uh, horror movie called The Empty Man that is marketed like it is a challenging and thought-provoking and, and just beautifully shot, interesting movie. And, and everybody knows about it. And, and the trailer's great. And then, you know, all is hunky-dory in the world, right? That stuff just doesn't happen all the time. So anyway, here we are, uh, this movie, Empty Man, nobody knows about it, and we're going to review it right now. Here we go. Let's do this. The Empty Man stars James Badge Dale, Marin Ireland, Sasha Frolova, and is directed by David Pryor. What's up, guys? Really excited, and let me be upfront with you guys on this, okay? Yes, I saw the Chris Stuckman review. Um, my general rule of thumb is if uh, I plan on reviewing a movie, I don't watch any reviews before I review that movie, just because I don't like somebody else's ideas in my head. So, uh, going back to October of last year, I do remember seeing on my AMC app that this movie came out. I checked out the trailer. I don't think the trailer's that good. I think the trailer's very misleading, and it looks like just one of those stock, supernatural, CGI fest, Slender Man types of movies. And so I just kind of passed it over. And it really wasn't marketed as anything. It was kind of hard to gauge because of the pandemic, but it was this and like come play and just a, a bunch of bad stuff at the theater at the time. And again, nobody was talking about this movie, so I just let it pass me by. So a couple days ago, I, I see in my YouTube feed, Chris Stuckman's thumbnail there, and it says cult classic, and that caught my interest. But I still didn't feel like reviewing it, you know? I was like, okay, I'll check out this review. And I watched it. I got up to the spoiler warning, and then I said, I need to watch this. So I shut the review off. I watched it last night. Was really floored and surprised by the quality. The quality of this movie. Could not believe it. And so... You know, I'm just thankful for people like Stuckman who have an audience the size that he has that can get the word out to these films that go unnoticed that should be noticed. You know, this is a quality work right here. And it to me, it's just shocking. I love stories like this, though, because now I, I feel like this movie will find its audience. You know, it doesn't hurt that Chris Stuckman is doing a review on it, but I just want to talk about it. It's just that good of a movie. And and by the way, too, when I first discovered YouTube, back in 2012 is when I first started watching it. I was in this little trailer uh, in Afghanistan, and and I saw uh, Stuckman and Jeremy Johns. And Stuckman was the guy that I liked the most, and I would just binge watch his, his reviews. And it's not something that I talk about that much, but I am a huge Stuckman fan. I don't get a chance to watch really any reviews these days. But back then, I would just like binge watch his stuff and Jeremy Johns and Flick Pick and all those guys. But I, I always thought Stuckman was my favorite. You know, everybody has their their brand, I guess, that they like. Uh, I guess the, the delivery. He, I always liked his delivery. But anyway, let's get into this movie, The Empty Man. Wow. So at face value, if I were to tell you just the premise of this movie, it does sound like one of those, you know, Slender Man, CGI Fest, Bloomhouse types of uh, movies. You know, it's you take this bottle, these kids pick up this bottle, they blow on it, and then it just summons the empty man. Try what? Calling the empty man. Who's the empty man? If you're on a bridge and you find a bottle, you blow into it and you think about the empty man. And the first day, you're going to hear him. The second day, uh, you're going to see him and he's going to scare the shit out of you. And then the third day is when he will kill you. I mean, this this sounds like, you know, the ring mixed with Candyman, you know, that, that type deal. And you could be fine putting out just a movie like that. But then there's this amazing director and this very uh, involved story wrapped all around it. And it's filmed like a Fincher movie. And everything about it is just very big. It feels very ambitious. That's the word I'm looking for here. This is just a very ambitious horror movie. But if I go deeper into the actual plot of the movie without going into the spoilers, because I'm not going to make this a spoiler review. I want you guys to watch this for yourselves. But this is broken up into three parts. The first part 
is this prologue that kind of sets everything up. You got the, this group of hikers, and one of them, he has an accident, he falls into this crevice, and his friend goes down, and he sees him, and he's like in kind of a meditative state, and he's, he's uh, it looks like he's praying to this, this skeletal uh, cult-like figure. And he whispers to the guy, don't touch me or you will die. And so that's when you know, oh shit, here we go. So for the next three days, there's some crazy shit happening. And there's some nice, shocking scares in this section of the movie. And, you know, in the other sections of the movie. There's some good horror stuff in here, guys. Trust me. So then, the second part of the movie feels more like your traditional type of horror movie. Where you have these kids and they summon the empty man. And so then you go through this process of trying to figure out, you know, why they went missing and, and what's going on. And it just feels like your traditional horror movie. But then the third part of the movie is where we go down the rabbit hole, where we explore the empty man, uh, where this cult-like uh, presence comes from. And it gets pretty trippy. Let me just say that right now. And so now getting into the characters, James Badsdale is the main character of this. He plays Lasombre. I've seen him in quite a few things, actually. Most notably, The Departed. Uh, very good actor, and he does a, a, an amazing job in this, actually. This is a part that requires a lot from an actor. Uh, it's just one of those parts where you want to give off this uh, air of just exhaustion. And like you're at the end of your rope. That's what this character is. He reminds me of like what Gyllenhaal brought to the role in Prisoners. You know, he just looks exhausted because there was this tragedy that happened in his life. And which plays a major part into the movie. And so he's like picking up the pieces of his life. He's taking antidepressants. Uh, he used to be um, a detective. And he's no longer working because of this tragedy. So when the empty man comes along and these five kids are missing... One of them is, it goes by the name of Amanda, who is in his life. Let's just say that. And so he takes it upon himself to research the case, you know, even though he's not a detective anymore because, you know, he has a, a personal stake in it. And so it kind of gives him purpose, actually. But he goes down this rabbit hole. And we've seen so many of these movies where you have just one central character, like, say, Bruce Willis in, in 12 Monkeys. They go down this rabbit hole and they start losing their own sanity in the process. And this is just a great case of that. And I loved his performance in this. But really, aside from all that stuff, it really, it's the filmmaking that makes this movie so great. You know, uh, David Pryor used to work under David Fincher. And this does have a lot of moments that look like a Fincher movie. But... More importantly, it just feels big, you know? It feels like a lot was put into this script. And you're gonna notice that within like, you know, the first few minutes of the movie. This doesn't feel like what you thought it was gonna be. You know, this is one of those movies that just kind of slipped under the radar. And I think it will definitely find a cult following because it's very unique, you know? It's shot very well. It's got some great horror elements in it. I think it's paced quite well for the most part i was never really bored but there is one section of the movie in like the third part of the movie not the third act because the third act is great but like the third like the last third of the movie uh when they go down that rabbit hole and they start really getting into the minutia of the cult and the empty man and it gets pretty head trippy it, it can be a little bit hard to stay with it and you, you know, it does go on for quite a while. This is a two hour and 17 minute movie. But once it gets out of that and you get into the actual final act, everything comes together and it all makes sense. If I had to dip my big toe into the cons, I would say they could probably tighten up this movie and maybe take off a good 20 minutes. You know, and that's my reviewer self saying that. But really, I think this movie's perfect as it is. Uh, I think a lot of those movies like Fight Club that didn't do that well when they first came out because people might have thought they were too long or they weren't marketed uh, as to what they eventually would become. I love Fight Club just the way it is. Even though it does have some long parts in it, that's part of what makes the movie great. Same type deal here. I think if you did take 20 minutes out of this movie, yeah, it would work, but then it would kind of feel cliche. Still great, still, you know ambitious 
I love that David Pryor was able to see his vision 100% to the end. You know, because that's a rare commodity, especially with big studios these days in Hollywood. It just doesn't happen that often. You know, you know, when you're dealing with the big studios, unless you're freaking, you know, like George Lucas or Christopher Nolan, they're going to make their cuts where they want to make their cuts. But I think the pandemic might have saved this guy's vision in this movie. Like if this movie would have come out, there was no pandemic and, and it was get, got a regular marketing uh, strategy, they would have definitely cut off 20 minutes off of this movie. No doubt about it in my mind. So it was kind of a happy accident. And sometimes it's good that a movie doesn't do that great at first because I think if something's really great, it will eventually find its audience. You know, it, it definitely will. And I do think word of mouth is such a useful commodity. I still think word of mouth is one of the best marketing strategies out there because, you know, great movies are great movies and people will find them eventually. Hell, on Killer Flicks, I see people mention the movie Triangle at least once every couple of weeks. And Triangle wasn't a hit at all. I don't even know if it even went to theaters, but people still talk about Triangle because of how trippy it was. I think the same thing's going to happen with this movie. You know, I think people are going to constantly talk about it. So anyway, I'm going to give this a super high purchase worthy. I thought this was excellent. Can't recommend it enough. And, you know, big thanks to people like Chris Tuckman that can spread the word about, you know, movies like this. Uh, I'm glad that a lot of people are starting to get the, the word uh, of how great this is. I think it's great. Anyway, uh, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Uh, buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dum out.